funny we're up to find scallions. <laughs> Dice scallions. Yeah. I'm trying to figure out what scallions are. Oh, okay, yeah, I don't, don't know what scallions are. So my wife, I'm in Walmart. And uh, I told my wife I was going to Walmart to get some personal items. Deodorants. Shaving cream. So my wife sends on this. Dice scallions. Hi, I'm looking for dice scallions. Dice scallions. Scallions. Say what? Dice scallions. Yeah. My wife sent. My wife sent me. Yeah, I don't. I don't have any idea right now. It's a man thing right now. So I'm asking the guy here. So she sent me as I'm looking for dice scallions. She said it's like onions. Yeah, I think. Hey, that may be. This is a scallion. Okay. Oh, yeah. Which oh, is like uh, green onion. It's like know? green onions? Yeah, a lot of people call green onion by scallion. Okay. So, yeah. My wife sent me to the store. And yeah. I don't you know. She gave me a list and I have no idea right now. Yeah, that's the one. Okay, I appreciate it. Yeah, so I found this like scallions. And uh, so she sent me to the store. And here's the list. You see the list. And uh, again, the topic of this vlog is understanding the source of intercourse of course a sex so here's 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 the focus point my reason for sharing this particular blog in Walmart before we get started so women are emotional sexual You're emotional first and then sexual I'm gonna stop in the, in the dressing aisle and men are sexual and emotional and so what that means is that when my wife sends me a list of 25 things that I have no idea, scallions, she says scallions, this says chopped green onions. So she sends me a list. Emotional first. I'm not gonna send back a negative text. I'm gonna take this text and search for dice scallions, even though it says chopped green onions. But I'm going to search for it, and I'm going to buy everything that she put on that list. What is heavy whipping cream? What? I, I don't. I don't get it. She sends me shredded white cheddar cheese. Can't find it. The lady says, "Well, it may be in the bulk of cheese. You got to grate it." I said, "Okay, that's information for me." So, here's my point about this particular vlog: is that. Women are emotional first. So we have to be able to meet their emotional needs first, whatever that may be. Sonia is Walmart. So when I come home and carry everything in the door and got the exact same thing she asked for, <laughs> what do you think is feeding her cup of sexual intimacy? It's the emotional stuff first. So today, we'll be talking about understanding the source of intercourse and the source of intercourse is that understanding that women are emotional first then sexual and men are sexual and emotional all right let me go finish finding where the doggone mango twist welch's juice is Welcome to Can We Talk, I'm Derek. And I'm Sonia. Thank you for watching. It has been a minute. The whole summer. Was it? Yes. The whole summer? Yes. Okay. So welcome back. We are glad to be back. We've had a very, very tumultuous season. But today's episode will not reflect that because we are back. 
And today's episode, which is actually season three, episode four, mm-hmm. is entitled, you ready? I'm ready. Understanding the source to intercourse. So can we talk? Can we talk? Can Understanding the source to intercourse. Are you talking about sexual intercourse? I am talking about, yes, we're coming back hot off the press. And we decided to tackle this topic because this has been a topic that we have been having with a lot of our clients all summer. And so we, we're talking about sex. Yeah, we're talking about sex. So and came, can you I explain came, why you're in your robe? Well, I honestly, honestly, I, y'all, I don't know why Derek's in his robe. I'm going to tell you why. <laughs> you want to know? Yes. You're going to learn know. today. So, look, it's 10.50 at night. We invited you into our home. And I figure, well, at 10.50 at night, we finish our clients. I say, well, I'm going to get dressed for bed. I'm not going to pretend to put on some clothes and shave. I haven't shaved in four days. No, he needs to shave. I'm not getting a haircut. I'm just coming to you completely at 10.55 at night. Because you're going to bed after this? Because I'm going right to bed. And have intercourse after this? <laughs> so I'm, I'm dressed according to how I'm feeling, and I'm ready to go to sleep. But we said we're going to do a vlog because it's been a while. But see, you know, here's so, the thing. Why... Why do grown married people struggle with talking about sex and sexual intercourse when that's just like how we wouldn't even be here if sexual intercourse didn't exist? True. Yet we struggle with that. So we, we, we want to take it back. We want to reclaim it. And we want to help everybody understand the source to inter- intercourse. So the reason I gave this episode that name is because there are two types of intercourse, but people only talk about one. Most people only talk about sexual intercourse. I want us today to talk about the other type of intercourse before sexual intercourse. And wives, y'all are gonna love this because this is what you kind of say to your your husbands and they don't understand. Um, And so we want them to understand the source to intercourse it is an emotional intercourse that, Say that happens slower. first. Say that again. There is an emotional intercourse. What does that mean? That happens first. Because the men are trying to catch up to that part. Yes. Meaning, men, that women were created to receive you. Sexually, yes, how we were physically made, the man enters the woman. And if this is being watched by children, you may want to tell them to not watch it, but you know. It might be too late. <laughs> and I guess this is like our children are watching. Sian yeah, yeah and, but they know this stuff. But we really haven't gone deep like this. So guess I what? I mean, they do know this stuff. Do, well, I didn't talk to them about it. Okay. No, well, I have. Okay. I mean, they watch it, but our kids know us. They know what we do. Yeah, talk but we about haven't really talked stuff. about it to like. About sexual intercourse? Yes, we have. Like, I talked to my kids, my girls about sexual intercourse. Not I, little I kids. have not had a conversation with my girls about sexual intercourse. Okay. Well, maybe you should. I'm going to give it to them right now. (laughs) Go ahead, continue. (laughs) They're going to get it now. (laughs) Oh, girls, we're sorry if you're seeing this. Don't blush. So (laughs) here's the thing. Women were created to receive the man. I think that's so beautiful. Mm -hmm. I think that the world has distorted it and corrupted it and made it nasty and shameful. But a man's body was built to come into the woman physically. But what men forget is that they were also made to come into the woman emotionally first because we are emotional beings before we are sexual beings. Men are sexual beings before they're emotional beings. And so what that looks like means that you're going to come into wherever we are in our emotions. You're going to acknowledge our emotions. You're going to respond to our emotions. You're going to uh, be aware of our emotions and then you're going to do something about it. That usually is the first source to physical intercourse, to sexual intercourse. Mm -hmm. The first course is emotional. Right. The challenge is that the largest sexual organ is the brain and so because men and women think differently 
and we think men think sexual first, emotional second, we've been programmed to think that. Mm -hmm. And so the challenge for, for men is to try to have a paradigm shift and understand the emotional part. We understand the sexual part. We just have a hard time understanding, well, why is emotional first for a woman and how do we go into the emotional waters? Yes, yes. Well, and, and that leads us to explaining that you first have to recognize that we were made differently. And, and even though we talk about it and it seems like it's common knowledge, we don't respond to each other like it's common knowledge. You are made differently than I am. Mm -hmm. And so many times I honestly feel, feel sorry for the men because the wives sometimes make their husbands feel like they're perverted wanting to be sexually close with their wives or wanting to have that sexual release. And I'm not a man, so I don't know what that feels like. But Derek has shared with me what that feels like as a man. And I just feel like men, men get a bad rap on that one because the wives make them feel shameful. And that's how they were made. Just like we shouldn't feel shameful that we require emotional intercourse first, yet we, um, in, we, we expect it and we don't have any shame about it. But then when the husbands are wanting to have sexual intercourse, because they are not knowledgeable about how to come into us emotionally with emotional intercourse, we make them feel shameful. Some wives do, a lot of the wives do. And so if you're doing that, stop that, okay? Understand that our men are visual and uh, sexual in nature first because they have the sex hormone, the testosterone. We don't have as much, we have more oxytocin. So we want to feel, it's the love hormone. We want to feel good. We want to emote. We want to feel loved. And, and that's what coming into us looks like. So it looks different for each wife. Some women are emotionally dissonant. So they don't have as much of a need for it. And some women are highly um, emotional and need that emotional intercourse more frequently. Um, and it, you just have to know your wife. But I will say this, most wives require it on some level. So you got to know what that looks like. If she's a stay at home mom, if she's self-employed, if she works nine to five, all of that's going to be around what she's going to need emotionally. So for some wives, it might look like support. For some wives, it might look like security. For some wives, it may look like encouragement. And for some wives, it may look like respect. It just depends on your wife. Do you know what her emotional need is? Um, and so if you don't, then you should ask, hey babe, what do you need from me emotionally every day? And they'll look just like this. Ask me At that question. Oh, okay. Hey, babe, what do you need emotionally from me? I need support. What does that look like? I need you to recognize verbally that I'm dealing with a lot emotionally. Um, for those that don't know, I lost my best friend, Tracy, in uh, May, and she was funeralized in June. I lost my dad in August. I lost my favorite uncle in August. So I need support emotionally. I need Derek to recognize that I'm not on my A game all the time because my heart's broken. Um, and the deaths have taken a toll on me emotionally. And so I, I need Derek to stop sometimes and recognize that I'm not going to do all the things I was doing on the level that I was doing it. So support looks like what? Being able to speak to that. You know, right. and maybe not always speaking to that. Sometimes just stepping in, you know, for right. me. The reason why I ask that question is because men don't ask those questions. You know, we hear what they need sometimes, our wives need, but we don't say, well, what does support look like? Because to me, I would probably respond, I won't now, but to me, I would probably do something that has nothing to do with support for her, for Sonia. So that's why I asked you the question. Mm -hmm. And asking the question, the wife will give the answer. And the question is, can we 
meet that particular need of support. Right. Do we want to? Right. Do we feel like it? Right. Because we are overwhelmed too. We are men tired too. And so it's hard to meet that need if we're in a place where we're just wanting to be sexually intimate without recognizing the emotional component. And I think that's that's what Sonia is saying for men is that we have to we have to know it from the time we wake up in the morning. We have to understand that, okay, whether it's support for Sonia or whether it's security for another wife or whether it's attention or appreciation, uh, they're taking care of the children, they're going to work and they're coming through the door and they're tired. And the expectation for us is, okay, that's what you're supposed to do, but you're supposed to also give me sex. And you probably won't get anything because she still needs that emotional support. So how do we go, how does a man go into his wife emotionally first, then sexually? You said that very well. Thank you. Um, do you think they got that? I think so. I, I think that by us saying for the men to understand, and it's hard for a lot of men. I mean, that's, we weren't, we weren't, Condition. We weren't taught. We talked mm -hmm. about this in videos before. We were bred into shutting up and not crying and not showing any tears and not showing any emotions. And, mm -hmm. and you got a man up at 10 years old. And so we were told all this on top of previous relationships and for some on top of previous marriages where we still weren't getting the emotional uh, understanding from that particular person. And so we weren't taught that. So I think by this hopefully this this vlog will help men to at least understand that it has to be emotional first and and if we're able to to do it in some it may take a while because there may have been some hurt in the marriage there may have been some damage in the marriage and so it may take some time to heal that hurt that may have been uh, violated um, but mm -hmm. that's that's the process emotional Women are emotional, sexual. Men are sexual, emotional. Mm -hmm. And as I was thinking while you were talking, there's a myth, too, um, that a lot of men have. And women, I think that's because we have not had the need of emotional intercourse met. So the myth comes from this. And there's a myth that women don't like sex. And that's a myth. We are sexual beings too. Why would God make only one person to enjoy sexual intercourse? Why would he do that? So a lot of the times men, um, you know, they feel again, like they're begging for it or they're in a place where they are needy, needy of it more than the woman. But it's not that. It's that if the woman if you don't go into her emotionally and have emotional intercourse first, it's very difficult for her to desire you sexually first. Um, and we were just wired that way. We were just made that way. Um, and I really believe that we were made opposites so that we could display consideration for the other. So I've got to be considerate of how Derek was made and he has to be considerate of how I was made because sex is not a selfish thing. It shouldn't be, which is why masturbation is not encouraged because that's all about self gratification. And in our teaching and in our belief, we believe that sex is a gift to the other person. So if I believe that this is a gift to you and you believe that that's a gift to me, then we would be meeting each other's needs, but we've got to dispel the myth first. We've got to dispel the myth because we get a bad rap on that. Um, and I think wives, it's because maybe you're not communicating what you need from your husband in a way that he can understand based on what Derek is saying because men weren't socialized that way. They weren't taught that. And so they get married and they have to learn something they've never been taught. And we're not patient enough sometimes. So that's where the whole cycle, the, 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 the vicious cycle starts. Right. I, I think men need to put their brain in the wash machine and wash it. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm listening to you talk, and I'm a man. Yes. And and I and I have to go back to before we were married. Mm -hmm. I had stuff in my brain as it relates to sex, mm, and it was deep. so much. It was 
it was, it was so much real stuff, but there was so much lies that I was told. Mm -hmm. And so I have all this in my brain and I say I do, that stuff in my brain has to go through a, a, a washing mm, out so that I can see you as my wife and understand who you are to me. Because early on in our marriage, I associated Sonia to people in my past, positive or ne negative sexually. And I had to f uh, wash my brain to really see who so and it required honestly it just required a real conversation i mean it really required us to sit down mm -hmm. and I talk remember. about our mm -hmm. experience and most men don't want to have a conversation about their wives previous relationships you know it's only wanted to know tell me about your sexual experiences no i don't know why we're having this conversation right now <laughs> but it was important so she could understand the sexual man first oh this is deep Mm. understand the sexual man first so she can get into the emotional man mm. because if she didn't understand the sexual and why I had those sexual experiences and most almost all of them came from a warped sense of understanding it came from a needs fulfilling place the need for acceptance the need for approval associated with sex for man so that's why we have it mm. part of it is that we're in eights to have sex and we're driven because of our testosterone. But I believe that a big part of it is that our brain has been, been uh, there's a lot of- Compromise? Compromise. And so um, I think that's the challenge for us to transition from not, not changing our sexual desires, but understanding our, our understanding your emotional first and sexual, next sexual, mm -hmm. and then understanding I do have that emotion inside of me, but that emotion was distorted. Mm -hmm. Not to say that a woman's emotions weren't distorted because they, you know, women have experienced some things that are horrific and traumatizing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so it does, it does distort their emotions and their feelings. Because women who have been violated, who have been compromised, then it'll be hard for them to be emotional first. That's true. So if, it's, if, if a woman has been compromised... That's the promiscuity of women that, right. that become or, very or, promiscuous. Or the reverse, just just dormant. Right. You know, frigid. So, frigid. Mm -hmm. So you have a combination of does... That's true. How does a man... And so going back to the communication part, it's so important for couples to kind of sit down. You know, in, my, in our vlogs, I say, put your big boy pants on and your big girl pants on and you sit down and you just have a real adult conversation about mm -hmm. those kind of things. Because once you talk about those things mm -hmm. and, and, and let those things out and say, okay, we, we may need some therapy to help process some of those things. Mm -hmm. But when you're free, indeed, then the sexual intimacy will be... Free. Free. Mm -hmm. Did you have a few other points? Because uh, I did, because okay. as you were talking about that, I was thinking about how when we interview men and women, men's introduction to se their sexuality is usually presented to them in a perverse way. The average woman's introduction to her sexuality is not. Right. Which explains the whole brain going in the washing machine, mm -hmm. right? Um, and there are some women, their introduction was traumatic you know, of some kind. But for the most part, you know, we, the average woman experiences that consensually with someone they fell in love with, um, someone they thought they were gonna marry, um, uh, or, you know, girlfriend talk, you know, where they have fantasies about it. And, and I noticed that when we hear men and their first introduction, it's usually distorted, perverted, uh, you know, just, polluted yeah. you know it comes with all kinds of different uh introductions that women just don't see right or hear or understand or understand hear. yeah yeah or value it right right You're just like, a dog right <laughs> like like right. The, there's pressure for teen boys to lose their virginity there's not that same level of pressure for teen girls you know, I mean, well, back in my day, because now I heard it's different. Now I heard girls, anyway. Now I heard girls are the pursuers in high school, yeah. which is blowing my mind, but 
I've been told that, you know, and um, I have teen daughters and, and they've told me, you know, girls are the ones that are, are, are the cougars, <laughs> you know, mm, and right. I think that that's unfortunate that anyone should be that in that age, but it used to be where the boys were. Mm -hmm. And now it's now more so the girls. So you this is why? why. I mean, I'm, that that's off topic. We got. Oh, I don't know why, but I will I encourage you if you got teenage daughters to find out what their mindset is about that, because it's prevalent. Where's the father? But anyway. Oh, that's a that's I, a segment. That's a whole nother. That's another segment. That's a good segment. That's a good question. They don't know because they never heard a man's voice. Mm. Okay. And the, mm. the next voice they hear is on top of a morning. Mm. They recognize that Ooh, voice. Ooh, you can go there. But they wow. don't recognize the father's voice. That's so deep. Anyway, that's, that's, a, so that's deep. part two. That's so deep. Where's the father's voice? That's mm -hmm. so true. There right. is a connection. It is. Between the presence of a father in a girl's life and how she responds to men. Right. So the topic of this particular episode is what again? Understanding the source to intercourse. Did we talk about that? Yes, we did. You have to understand it? that the emotional in intercourse is the source mm -hmm. to sexual intercourse. That was good. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That's some deep stuff. I know. We have no idea what we're going to talk about. until. Not story. today, because no. we were we were talking we were. about getting back onto our episode, right. onto our season, and we just we were just so emotionally exhausted y'all talk about compassion fatigue yeah, you know we had a, a, a episode on compassion fatigue that was us since may right. june july august and september so we figured we're gonna finish out this season with a bang we've got october november and december to do we thank you for your patience while we had to recover from so much tragedy and loss yeah. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your emails. Thank you for your text messages. Lots of you reached out to us, Facebook, all of that good stuff. And you know who you are. We thank you. We appreciate yeah. you for hanging in there while we worked out our emotions to be able to come back and um, right. record. Yeah. Because it's a lot. It's been a lot. Maybe we'll do some episodes on the summer, things that we went through that are relevant to marriage. Because yeah. we did get a lot of marriage lessons. Um, in the last four months, right? The lesson I got is humility. Mm -hmm. And then making it applicable to our marriage, being humble. Yeah. Based on what we've been doing. Yeah. So we'll talk about that later. So you understand, hopefully, the source to intercourse. And now that you know what, what you're going to do, do with, with it. it. Thank you for watching. We appreciate you. Um, Thank you for subscribing. We had a few yes. people who subscribed from yes. the um, the Allegheny East, East conference. They, our yeah, Allegheny East people. Time. We had a great marriage conference. Yeah, we met and the Smiths. Yeah, we met the Smiths. Yeah. Shout out to the Smiths. So they said the name is now the Smenders. Yes, we blended. We have become a blended family. The <laughs> the Smenders. The Smiths. <laughs> <laughs> um, check out their website, yes. Meet the Smiths. Yes. They, they have a powerful ministry as well, so we want to give them yes. um, a shout out. To and we're going to be doing do. some work together, hopefully, in, in the near future. Yeah, you know, so, two power couples working together, yeah. hopefully. So, so we we appreciate you watching. Subscribe yes. to our channel, um, share it with everyone else, um, and uh, we look forward to sharing our lives with you again and again and again. So, so until next time, take good care of yourselves. Can I take off my robe now? Chicka chicka doom ta ta pa ta ka ta ta a doom doom ta a doom ta a doom doom ch a doom ch a chicka 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 boom ta a doom ta take it. You're stupid.